Welcome to another Fine Scale Modeler Weekly. And do we have a packed show for you, starting with a very popular subject. That's right, it's Tacom's 135th scale Hetzer, properly known as the Jagdpanzer 38T. Tacom's kit of the little German tank destroyer includes a full interior. Let's take a look. The hull has a separate belly, lower sides, sponsons, front and rear plates. The upper body is mostly a single part with a roof for the fighting compartment, including the option of a clear one to show the interior and a multi-part engine deck. The Panzer 38T suspension features bogies with separate road wheel arms and sharply molded leaf springs, dry sprockets, idlers, and road wheels. Lincoln length tracks finish the running gear outside. Inside, there's a transmission, front axle and brakes up front, a well-appointed engine in the rear fitted between fuel tanks and the battery. A detailed firewall separates the power plant from the crew area. Detail in the crew compartment includes the crew seats, radios, and racks of rounds for the 7.5 centimeter gun next to the transmission and along the walls. The gun has a full breech with sight and elevation equipment that fits into the mantlet front housing. Optional plastic or turned metal barrels are provided. A small photo etched metal fret supplies an engine screen exhaust, heat shield, and other details. Decals and color diagrams give markings for four Hetzers. One in full late war camouflage in Germany in May 1945. A rather plain overall dark yellow vehicle also in Germany in May 1945. And a pair of similarly camouflaged Jagd Panzer 38s with Panzerjager Abteilung 743 in East Prussia in August 1944. Now, I can already hear a bunch of you saying there have been a large number of Hetzer kits over the years. But with a full interior and Tacom's reputation for building ease, this should be a nice addition to that pantheon. We've looked at a couple of ICM's beautiful 148 scale Bristol Beaufort kits since they first landed at FSM in late 2022. You can find the links to those video previews as well as Andy Key's Workbench Review at the links in the description. Now here's the latest offering, the Beaufort Mark 1A in World War II British Dominion service. Decals and new marking options set this kit apart from the others. It includes a dark earth and dark green over black number 489 Squadron Royal New Zealand Air Force plane, a dark green and ocean gray over black number 415 Squadron Royal Canadian Air Force bomber, dark earth and dark green over sky aircraft from 36 coastal flight and 37 coastal flight of the South African Air Force in a similarly camouflaged plane from a number 149 squadron Royal Canadian Air Force. I seems Beaufort is a really nice model and the addition of new marking options widens its appeal. Let's take a look at a couple of books from Osprey's new Vanguard series. Starting with U.S. Navy Protected Cruisers 1883 to 1918 by Brian Lane Herter. The 48-page soft cover traces the period that sees the birth of the new Navy as the first all-steel warships enter U.S. service through the Spanish-American War and into World War I. The second book is William E. Highstand's Allied Tanks at El Alamein 1942. Using period photos and color profiles, the 48-page soft cover looks at the development of the British Eighth Army into a potent armored force. If you like ships or tanks, these books may find a way onto your shelf. Our final kit this week is something different from Trumpeter. A 172nd scale, 4,500-meter man-submersible Shenhai Yongshi. That's Chinese for Deep Sea Warrior. The research submersible entered service in 2017. Not only is the subject unique, but Trumpeter makes it easy to build with pre-finished snap together parts. The hull is in halves and receives a red fin and finely molded metallic propulsion units, light guards, lights, grapples, and more. The markings are provided as both water slide decals and stickers. So this is a straightforward model that should be easy to build and could be fun to like light and put in a diorama. Yeah, look for reviews of the Hetzer and Submersible at finescale.com. A great place to find all kinds of modeling information like how-to stories and videos and tons of galleries from shows. The Kalmbach Hobby Store carries a range of tools and references, including these Schiffer Legends of Warfare titles. Fine Scale Modeler Weekly is brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. 
Andy Keys is a reviewer for Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And recently, he's been talking a lot about microscale micro liquid tape. Now, if you haven't heard about microscale micro liquid tape, it is a, an adhesive that looks a lot like white glue, but what it's supposed to allow you to do is after you apply it, it dries down, and then you can tack a part on your model into place, as the bottle says, temporarily. Andy has been using it to tack canopies and other windows and parts that he would like to take off to maybe show off the interior of a model, and then he can put those parts back on, and the adhesive holds that part in place. We around here haven't used it, at least I know I haven't, and Aaron said that he hasn't. So we thought what we would do is go ahead and give this product a try. Now I have right here a van body, I've got a windshield. Not that that's what you're going to use it for, but it's what I had on hand and it should be able to hold it in place, right? So just so that you know that I, there's no sleight of hand here, you know, push that windshield up in place and oh, it's in there right now, but if I do this, uh, it comes out. So we'll make sure to use the old glue on there and do the same test later on. It is supposed to be water soluble, so we'll try cleaning that up at the end but I don't know what it's going to do to a brush, so I'm going to use a dotting tool to apply it to the windshield. Let's get to it. Well, it does look like white glue in there. I don't know how much to use, so I'm just gonna sort of liberally apply it, and then we'll let it dry. So you can see it all the way around there. Go ahead and let that dry. So while it's drying, I'll clean off this tool. It says water soluble. <laughs> you know what would be useful? Paper towel. paper towel. Hang on a second. Let me go get a paper towel. Cut. Roll it. Paper towel. All right, so I didn't let this stuff dry, really. I'm wiping on it pretty hard. Oh, a little bit of it dried. Hell. Oh, you can see that there. Okay. Hey, you know, it's leaving a little bit of a residue. It's kind of tacky. We'll see if this comes off with water when it's dry. I'm gonna be interested to see if that's, if that actually works on the part. Well, I got most of it off, so the dotting tool is clean. So that's something. All right, now we just gotta wait for the part to completely dry before we put it in the body. After about 15 or 20 minutes, the micro liquid tape has dried and you can tell it's dry because it is clear. So, Go ahead and stick it on in there. Now I am not touching the edges because it's tacky and I don't want you know to mess up the, the tackiness of the adhesive. Get it up in there. I'll try and make it seat as nicely as possible. All right. So the part is in there just like it was earlier. I think we can all agree that the part is in there. I'll, uh, I'll flex the body like I did. Oh, I'm flexing it more than it was. So it is definitely staying in there. And obviously I had pulled it, I actually pulled it apart there. So it's staying, it's staying intact. Let's see how easy it is to take out. Well, it was definitely grabbing. You could see that it was grabbing. So I've removed it. And you can see where it, you know, it's gotten, I wouldn't say foggy, but you can definitely kind of see some schmutz there <laughs> where it was, where it was grabbing onto the body. And 
let's just go ahead and put it back in. Now, I don't know how many times you'd be able to do this process. Andy Keys says you can do it plenty of times as long as the adhesive doesn't get dirty. Obviously, I would think that after a certain point, it's going to wear out, but it's definitely in that body. So I think that would be a very neat option. Um, if you were going to say apply a canopy temporarily to your plane, maybe there's a canopy, a closed canopy that you can use. You can apply it with, uh, you can apply some micro liquid tape down, attach the canopy, you can do your painting, then you can take that canopy off and then you can put your open canopy in place if that's, if that's what you wanna do. I think there are a number of different things that you could probably do with this product. I will say this, I used the dotting tool to apply it and I had to work, um, not hard, but you know, I had to work to get it cleaned up with the water. So what I would suggest is using a dotting tool or a toothpick rather than a paintbrush. It's definitely what I would do when using micro liquidation in the future. So we like to try and keep it light and well, somewhat funny in the in the wrap up, but we've learned recently of some sad news. Yeah, we learned that Jeff Palazzetto, a longtime contributor to the magazine, a very creative guy, uh, passed away in July. Yeah, um, Jeff was a a champion of sci-fi. Yeah, and we loved building sci-fi stuff. You yeah. had him build a Star Destroyer diorama for the cover of the January, February 2022 issue, yep. which is probably what many of you may remember. And if you're regular readers, you've seen his work regularly um, through the magazine over the years. Yeah. And just a super nice guy. I've met him at Wonderfest uh, several years ago. Very, very funny about this. And he loved sci-fi stuff. He just loved building sci-fi. I never had a chance to meet him in person, but he and I would talk via email. He was always very upbeat, very excited about the work that, uh, that he did. And, you know, what we wanted to do was share some of the models that appeared in Fine Scale Modeler over the years uh, with you guys now.